Today's showcase video is on the 1932 Packard Light 8 Model 900 Coupe Roadster. Now the 900 uh, series, the Light 8 series, uh, that was produced in 1932 and only 1932 by Packard as an affordably priced uh, car and there were four different body styles to the line. Packard's idea was that they could build a smaller wheelbase, lighter car that was more efficiently engineered, and thus they could make it more affordable to the public. The only problem with that was that uh, the base price of the car was about $2,600 in 1932, but for $2,600 you could also buy five Ford V8 cars. So uh, with that said, if you were to take that in today's money, uh, that would be about $125,000, which is uh, quite a sum for a car. Uh, well past uh, your Mercedes-Benz and your Audis and uh, you know European cars of that nature. To go on with this car, uh, I'm going to talk about some of the details uh, relevant to the Light 8 and what makes it special and also highlight the features of this particular example. Probably the most distinguishing feature of the Packard Light 8s was what they call uh, the shovel nose grill. Now this is a elegantly tapered and sloping grill that uh, descends from uh, vertical all the way down to a really uh, attractive uh, tapered point right between the frame rails, uh, the frame horns actually, and uh, the body style is uh, a little shorter. Um, another detail that uh, is characteristic of these Light 8s is the three louvers on each side of the hood. The big brothers of the Light 8s, the Standard and the Deluxe 8s, had the uh, four louvers on either side of the hood. And then the big 12s, the peak of the uh, models that uh, Packard offered, uh, in 1932 they were called the Twin 6. Uh, the Twin 6s had six louvers on either side. Now, as we continue on with the details of the Light 8s, Another detail about the uh, Light 8 series uh, in terms of the performance is the engine, uh, which was rated about 110 horsepower. The uh, Standard and Deluxe had about 135 horsepower. And then the top of the line, Twin 6s for 1932, had about 160 horsepower. Now, what really factors into uh, what makes this special in terms of performance is the lightweight of the car. Uh, the car, as it presently sits here, curb weight, is about uh, 4,200 pounds. Now, the owner, the original uh, purchaser, when the car was bought new, had a downdraft carburetor installed, which netted about another 10 additional horsepower, bringing it to 120. And then the current owner, uh, installed a distributor uh, with precision action that uh, netted an additional 10 horsepower, bringing the total horsepower for this car to 130. Now with a curb weight of 4,200 pounds and 130 horsepower, this was more efficient than the Deluxe 8 Coupe Roadster, which would have been about uh, 4,800 pounds, maybe even a bit more with the side mounts. Uh, so we're talking about uh, 5,000 pounds. And with that, you're talking about 130 horsepower, 135 horsepower. Now, at the very top of the line, uh, the Twin 6 Coupe Roadster would have been about 5,500 pounds with the side mounts at 160 horsepower. So. Right away you can tell, if you do a little quick math, that this is the most efficient model, uh, power to weight ratio-wise, of the Packard line as it stands here on the floor today. 
so. This is a more spirited ride. In addition, the Light 8 also had a more advanced frame design. Uh, they had a X-Cross member down at the bottom uh, center uh, rail assembly and then they had a K-Cross member up towards the front so it gave you a relatively stiff uh, front end and also uh, stiffness throughout the body despite the light weight. So you had a, a, a pretty rigid car when it came down to it. Uh, so it would give you uh, definitely a sporting ride experience, sporting driving experience uh, as you were going about your day motoring. Another interesting detail, this is a, a feature that's uh, present on most Packards of this time period, is uh, the ride control, which is this little uh, pull-out uh, switch here, which gave you uh, a hard or soft response on the shocks. So if you were going over relatively rough roads through the countryside, uh, you could set it for a soft response and then that would save you a little bit of road shock. If you were driving on uh, you know, urban streets uh, and you wanted to get a little bit more of a uh, tighter response as you were steering through narrow streets, you could set it to hard. Uh, the trim on the Light 8s was uh, a faux wood enamel paint but as you can see here on this car, it's uh, very hard to tell if that is uh, real walnut or if that is an enamel faux paint job. Uh, so this was done very well. And as you can see down here, underneath, typically Packard for 32 to, 30, uh, 32 to 34 would have the American walnut combination with the Carpathian Fancy Burl Elm. And uh, you can see here that this is a very burly pattern, and this was also done uh, by the same uh, restoration specialist. So a lot of attention to detail was paid on this car. Now, say what you will about the Light 8s being at the bottom end of the spectrum in terms of uh, model uh, line offerings by Packard, it's still a Packard regardless of what anybody says. And the build quality is no less as uh, well executed and uh, tightly controlled as any other, be it a Deluxe 8, a Standard, or a 12. I'll take you through the uh, dash cluster here. Now we've got, um, we've got the temperature. Uh, just behind there we've got the Amperes for the battery. Then we have our speedometer with the odometer reading 2300 and 2 miles. That's uh, 2300 and 2 miles since restoration. I don't know how well you can see that. Uh, gasoline gauge. You've got your oil pressure, which on this car would be about. Uh, 43 to 45 pounds while it was running. Then also a clock in your uh, passenger side glove box, which actually works. A lot of the clocks that we see, uh, you know, in the older cars as they're brought in, regardless of the quality of the restoration, uh, the clocks really never work. Uh, the actions weren't uh, that precise, and you know, it's just old instrumentation. But believe it or not, this clock still works and you can hear it ticking. This car also has turn signals which is convenient as you're uh, driving on modern day roads and period correct upholstery. Uh, you can see that the pleating pattern here uh, if you are familiar with the standard deluxe 8 it's a little different uh, but it's correct and if you uh, are uh, in possession of some old Packard sales literature. Typically what they would do is that they would show the upholstery patterns because that was one of the amenities that set the Packards apart from everybody else. Um, they would use top grain leather 
and really spare no expense at the customer's behest to appoint your vehicle as luxuriously as you wish. Now here we've got our rumble seat, which is standard on the Coupe Roadster. And then you have these leather um, fold-out armrests. Now you would put your arms on these and these would save you from the discomfort of a hot uh, metal car body in the uh, summer sun if you're riding in the back here. And I'll go down towards the bottom here and you'll see, well look at that, a set of golf clubs. Now that set of golf clubs is there for a reason. The current owner, when showing the vehicle, wanted to draw attention to the golf club compartment, which is pretty standard on most roadsters and convertible coupes. Uh, you know, from the luxury manufacturers, whether it be Pierce Arrow or Peerless or Cadillac. You also have the aluminum uh, step plates here for getting into the rumble seat. I'll fold out the other armrest so that you can see the uh, complete ensemble. And then you have a deluxe trunk with folding trunk rack. Now it's going to take both my hands to open this up properly. All right, now that I have the trunk open, I want to draw your attention to this really beautiful brocade cloth lining that's uh, in this trunk. And you can see here, uh, there's even a little Packard uh, ID plaque that's a uh, little metal badge that's set right into the lining. And that is uh, very correct. This is what it would have uh, appeared like if you were to order uh, something uh, this deluxe. Uh, you could have your choice of linings for these trunks. And it really just drew attention to the fact that this is a gentleman's car, a luxury car, and not necessarily, you know, a type of car that you would just throw a bunch of uh, tools or paint and stuff like that in. So, uh, you know, that type of... Uh, car was relegated to your uh, working class, uh, middle class folks. Now this car has a trickle charger because this is 6 volt and the current owner would uh, carry that with him when uh, he would show the car and then have it at the concourses. Uh, typically, you know, if you were demonstrating the car or left things on, uh, it would be really inconvenient for you to go around just the uh, fairgrounds of the show and ask for a jump. So that uh, would uh, help keep the battery life of the car while it was shown. A detail about the Coupe Roadster bodies that I want to talk about here and why Packard made Coupe Roadsters and not Roadsters um, was because uh, in 1931, they decided to do away with that body style, the Roadster body style, as it were, because it, uh, it really didn't give you the type of amenity that uh, Packard customers expected, and, it, and that was uh, a full protection from the elements, because a Roadster, according to you know, car styling parlance, is an open-bodied two-position car with no side window glazing. So you didn't have windows. What you had were these uh, canvas, or in modern times, a vinyl see-through uh, side curtain. Now, they would typically mount in a little uh, hole, and then they would be supported by a metal frame that went all the way around uh, the window. However, Anybody that's driven a car with those side curtains, especially a Roadster, and you've had to go through a little uh, spate of cold weather, knows that uh, those things really don't work too well. And they figured this out a long time ago. So uh, Packard engineers decided to uh, do away with that, and they really wanted to give the uh, driving experience uh, no compromises. So. 
they didn't want to expose anybody to the elements and they wanted to make something that was essentially an all-weather car but still an open top two position or two slash four position car in the case of convertible roadster with rumble seat so that's why Packard from 1932 forward had the coupe roadsters versus just the plain roadster shut the door here as you can see you have a very nicely framed uh, fully deployed glass that fits snug with the top when it's up and if you're driving around in rain you don't have to worry about rain seeping through any of the gaps between uh, an old uh, canvas side curtain and the uh, A-pillar of the car so moving right along, this car's uh, luxury amenities include the deluxe uh, Goddess of Speed hood ornament, which you would have traditionally just had the cap, but this one has the deluxe hood ornament, which is very nice. And at the bottom here we've got our safety trip lights, in addition to our normal spotlights, or headlights rather. And then we've got our dual side mounts. These were an upgrade option. Uh, you wouldn't have the dual side mounts if you just ordered a regular Light 8 Coupe Roadster. Uh, you had to pay a little bit extra for those. And the color, which is perhaps one of the most distinct features of this car. Now this is a Panquin Green, and this would have been a catalog correct color but it's not part of the factory ensemble of colors that they offered which I believe were 14 for 1932. Uh, Panquin Green was a custom color that you paid about a hundred dollars extra for uh, but they gave it a two-tone contrast so you have the Panquin Green light on the body and then the Panquin Green dark on the belt line molding and the fenders. Now the car also has wide white wall tires on chrome wire wheels, same with the side mounts, side mount mirrors, and the deluxe truck with the trunk rack. You had the armrests as I indicated earlier, and on this car, yes the golf club bag with the golf clubs comes included. So that concludes the video uh, for our 1932 Packard Light 8 Coupe Roadster Model 900. This is Volo Classic Cars. Uh, you can see the car and uh, many more in our classic showroom at volocars.com. And thanks for watching.